I've drawn um, three distributions here, so three different shapes of distributions. So in the first one, I've tried to draw a positive skew where there's a lot of data here and then there's some more data sort of tailing off on the right-hand side. Here, I've tried to draw a symmetrical distribution and um, where the median will be somewhere in the middle, the mean will also be somewhere in the middle. Um, and here, I've drawn a negative skew where there's a lot of data there Median is going to be somewhere around here, and the mean would be more to the left of the median. In the positive skew, the mean would be more around here, and the median would be more on this side. Now, these are sometimes counterintuitive, the way you think about it. So if I was to um, show you the actual data that makes these uh, distributions, uh, it, it might feel like oh, a certain data should make this shape, but actually we get this shape for, the, for its distribution. Um, some of the other things that we should think about are uh, one of the uh, better diagrams that you can use to find or guess what the distribution might be like is a box plot. So, for example, for the first one, the box plot, the middle part of the box plot would be something like this, and the median would be quite close to the lower quartile here. For the symmetrical distribution, you will have the middle part like this, and the median would be somewhere in the middle. And for the negative skew, again, you're going to have the middle part of the box plot like that, and the median is going to be quite close to the upper quartile. Okay, so if the median is quite close to the upper quartile, this suggests negative skew. If the median is quite close to the lower quartile, this suggests positive skew. And if it's around the middle, then it's going to be quite symmetrical. There are some other clues that we can also use um, to try and predict what the skewness will be. So if we find that the mean is greater than the median and this is greater than the mode, this won't always, but it may indicate that this is a positive skew. Okay, so this might say to you that you're going to get a positive skew with that data. Now, if it was the other way around, so if we had the mode is greater than the median, which is greater than the mean. Now, this one could tell you that the data has a negative skew, okay? And it's kind of like what I said already. So if the mean is greater than the median, so the mean would be somewhere around here because these extreme values would be pulling the mean this way and the median would be here. So that would mean the mean is greater than the median. So this would maybe indicate positive skew. And here where the mean is very small, you can see that these extreme values here will pull the mean this way a little bit and the mean will be somewhere here while the median might be there. Okay, so... Uh, this one could indicate um, a negative skew. Okay, so this first one could indicate a positive skew. And the second one could indicate a negative skew. Now, for our course, um, there is a calculation that we can use to find what the skewness is. So this calculation here will give us some value, and that's a value that we can use to state what the skewness is. Uh, we'll see how it works and what that means. So I have, some, uh, I have an example here. So it, it says, the following data is from an investigation on how a particular plant grows in different conditions. And I'm saying that the mean height for that is 6.3 centimeters. The median height is 8 centimeters. You should already think about, OK, is the mean bigger or smaller than the median, and what does that suggest? And we've got standard deviation here at 1.93. Now, I can use these values in my formula because they're the only values that I need. I need the mean, median, and standard deviation. So let's go ahead and do that. So what I'd do is to find the skewness for this data, I would do 3 times the mean is 6.3, and the median is 8. And I'm going to divide that by 1.93. Okay, so I'm going to put that in my calculator. And I've done that. And that gives me a value of negative 2.64, rounded to two decimal places. So what I find is that I get a negative value here. 
Now the negative value tells me that there is a negative skew here. Okay, so there is a negative skew. Also, um, I can see that this number is negative 2.64. Okay, so zero would be a symmetrical distribution. Positive numbers would be a positive skew. And negative numbers would be a negative skew. The closer it is to zero, the less of a skew we have, and it's the closer it is to a symmetrical distribution. This one, I would say, has a moderate negative skew. Something like negative four or negative five would have a strong negative skew. And for, you know, the same values if it were, were on the positive side, so positive 2.64 might have a moderate positive skew, and positive four or positive five would be a strong positive skew. Now here are some for you to do. So you need to calculate the skew for each question and interpret your result. So you're going to calculate the skew using the formula that I gave you. And you're going to interpret the result. Now in the last example, I didn't, I didn't write down whether or, not, whether or not it's a positive skew or a negative skew or whether or not it's weak or strong, but I did say it. Okay, so you need to write it down. So you need to calculate it first and then you need to interpret that value okay, by, by saying whether or not it's a positive or a negative skew and um, also saying whether or not it's strong or weak.